almost said, hey, bestie. Hey, hey besties. Bestie. We should. Welcome back. Yeah, we should. That could be our good. That could be our intro. Yeah. Um, hello. Welcome back to the Girls That Get It podcast. That is the name with your hosts, Ken and Han. Um, today, we are talking about a lot of things. So buckle up because it's going to be a ride for it sure. Is kind um, of some deep things, if I'm being honest. I know. That's why I'm, that's why I was saying a second ago, they're like, am I ready? Am I really ready? <laughs> I, 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 I felt you on that. I was like, I'm kind of in a happy go lucky mood. Do I want to bring it down? Do I want to get serious? Right. Right. Which like, don't worry y'all. We aren't going to get too sad, but like some of the stuff we're, we're kind of going to have a heart to heart a little bit in a way. <sighs> Bestie, I wasn't ready for that. I know me either. Can we cancel this actually? Yeah. Just I don't cut the camera. I don't know. <laughs> We're in good vibes. We do want to do like a real heart to heart episode, but like it's that's not, not the time or place. It's not today. No. no. Um, do you want to tell <laughs> them what is... we're doing yeah. today? And so we'll a couple episodes. Yeah, yeah. So a Go couple ahead. episodes ago, one of us mentioned that they were just going through the motions of life, and I can't remember who said it. I want to say it was you, but we kind of had the epiphany so. to do a whole episode on it so we're really going to talk about kind of like what that even means we talk about it as if everyone knows what it means but i don't think the way we refer to it is common or like yeah it's not universal anyway um and we're also going to talk about like the two different terms are going through the motions versus your living life and all of us strive to be living life but sometimes you get Mm -hmm. stuck going through the motions and so we're just gonna like deep dive on that talk about like what those differences are, how to get out of a slump and all those things, as well as kind of the role social media plays, because um, this is like kind of a interpersonal topic and social media definitely plays a big role. That is true. You are right about that. I'm ex- I'm excited because I think we'll have a good conversation. And I even though I'm like not in the mood to talk deep, I feel like it'll end up being really good and we're going to love this episode. I don't know why I just have that feeling. Um So that's good. But highs and lows, first and foremost, of this last week. Honestly, the last, like, couple weeks, because we haven't recorded in a couple weeks. Um, I guess I'll go first. Yeah. Hit it. My low. (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) I said hit it. This is kind of funny. Oh, you did? (laughs) I said hit it. Oh, I didn't hear you. Um, The irony. My low is, like, not... uh, it's nothing like tragic or anything. It's just like one of the most biggest inconveniences that you can experience in life. Um, which is kind of funny because Kenna, never mind. Forget I you'll, said that. Um, you'll figure it out. You'll hear. Just keep listening for like a few more minutes and the whole rest of the episode and you'll figure it out. Um, I've been, I like got into a fender bender like honestly a month ago. And so I've been dealing with like insurance getting my car into a body shop, getting a rental car, and just like that whole process of filing a claim, getting them to reply to you, figuring out what body shop can take you because everything is booked out for months and then trying to arrange a rental car. All of that situation, which if anybody has been in any kind of like minor or major accident, you know it's a pain in the butt um, and it's just one of those things you have to do and I have never been in an accident before so this is the first time that I've had to do all this stuff and it's just been like just annoying because it's like nobody wants to deal with this you know and I feel I feel bad for people who work in insurance because I I'm salty and like I'm taking it out on them and it's not even their fault (laughs) but like it's why they make the big bucks I know it's just one of those things so um yeah that would be my low for like the last month because i've oh. been like going through all that but i finally got my car in somewhere and i have hey, a car so God progress bless. is being made Ooh. thank goodness i know um uh, and then my high honestly i'm just gonna say this is random but it's something that i like did recently that was kind of fun and different um and that was that i went to a comedy show um Whoa. here in town with my mom we went on a friday night to get dinner we got sushi it was great <sighs> i had never been to the sushi place before and it was so good i'm so um, jealous i know it was amazing you would have liked it i think it was they good. don't do sushi um, the way they do it like back home oh oh here yeah i'm also a little I, scared I, we're in a landlocked state you can't tell me how are you gonna get yeah i know 
I know. Um, nope. So yeah, we had sushi. We went to a comedy show. Um, I'd never been to like an improv place. Well, it wasn't improv comedy, comedy, but it's called like Raleigh Improv or whatever. Um, and it was good. It was fun. It was a good time. Um, it was different too because sometimes like I don't know doing the same stuff like. Yeah. always going to a bar or always watching a movie like it's kind of gets like exhausting doing the same things so it was fun to switch it up a little bit and i had a good time so can't complain yeah i'm sorry about your accident those really do suck uh that's okay you know you know how you know how it is <laughs> yeah but i am happy you guys did something fun and different always looking to mix it up oh yeah but um for my highs and lows as as mm-hmm. hinted I was also in, I would say mine was a full on car accident Uh huh. and I have been in an accident before and the previous one was my fault. Yeah. But this one, however, ladies and gentlemen, was absolutely not. And mm-hmm. I'm really not going to go into it because I feel like it's kind of consumed my life the past week to two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but basically anything that could go wrong has gone wrong. Went wrong. And just everyone involved hasn't been as cooperative as they could and i think a lot of it is because i'm now at work one of our mottos is like if you can't provide a solution like don't complain about it and that's like a little paraphrase but like just be proactive and a lot of going through as hannah said a car accident whether it's your fault or not or no matter how serious it is it's just not efficient it's time consuming and a lot of people all they do is complain or place blame on other people when like accountability and like a kind heart goes a long way um it's true so my biggest takeaway and what i'll say to everyone is like you never know what someone else is going through so whether the accident is your fault or not just meet the other person with grace and like yeah i unfortunately it might not pay off with insurance regardless but like you know you're a good person and that like lets you go to bed like happy and sleep at night Mm -hmm. um but my high has just been that like i love it like i love work i love living here in colorado um i definitely like kind of my progress in things has definitely been a little hindered because of the accident because i have to take care of so much stuff um and i will say working a nine to six Monday through Friday, most offices to do things are open those hours. So it's been very, very hard for me to make hard to, yeah, progress. But I will say, like, my high is just like work. I love where I work. I work with such good people. Um, mm-hmm. My car accident happened at work, and someone from work came and stood with me the entire time, and she was really supportive. Aww, and this was, nice. it happened on my second week, which sucks, but it really just shows, like, like, I don't, they're not good people to work with. They're just good people in general. And like, I couldn't be Mm. more thankful to be surrounded by that right now. Um, I've also started, I had, since we last talk, I had my first sale with product. I have my first design clients for like, as a design assistant. Um, I've sat in Mm -hmm. on my first presentation. I've made my first CAD file and submitted that to a designer. Um, I have my first site visit to, uh, Thursday. Um, and a couple, like I've just done so much. I got my business cards yesterday. Yeah. Oh Um, yeah. They look good. They look good. I saw it on your Instagram. Yeah. So big things happening and I'm, I've said it once. I hope you love what you do because now working these hours and this consistently, like I see how much it consumes your life. Like love what you do because I don't, yeah. I, there's not a day where I hate going to work. And that's good. That's how it should. That's how, that's how it should be. I, I, I feel know. like people dream of that. So you're lucky to feel that way already. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm very, very fortunate in that sense. And honestly, that's worth more than a car accident could ever give me, you know, like true, true, true. All right. Um, so that's kind of our little catch up, but we're going to dive right in because we do have a lot to say. Um, yeah, we do. You know, but basically I think we're going to start with defining those two terms that I mentioned earlier. Um, mm-hmm. So I guess we can start with living because that's the positive one. When someone mm-hmm. or specifically when me and Han say like, oh, like you're a living girl, like you're doing the thing. What does that mean to us? If you want to share yours first. Yeah. Um, pretty much it just means you're thriving. That's pretty much the short version. Like, 
Yeah. I, I was going to say everything's great, but I, I guess that's unrealistic because not everything is always great. But like most things are going well. You're thriving. You're living your best life. Everything like nothing. Yeah. There's nothing much to complain about. Like it's great. You're happy. Everything's going lovely. It's good times, good vibes. Right. Is that how you would kind of define it in a way? I would agree. I would also add that like there's the parallel of like you're content with the growing steps that you're taking. You like yeah. acknowledge maybe like you're not exactly where you want to be, but you're happy that you're working there and like you're enjoying the uphill climb. You're not like tumbling down or like struggling for your life as you're like yeah. making your yes, way there. Yes, 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 yes. And that's when I say everything's great, I don't mean like nothing right. is wrong because that's unrealistic, but you know, vibes are overall good. Yeah, your mental and, state is at a high. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, as on the other hand, yeah, going through the motions is kind of like you're just kind of existing. Yeah, I call it survival mode when, like, literally all yeah. you can do is like have enough energy to get out of bed, and it's sometimes not even wanting to get out of bed, but recognizing like I have to be in work or I have to be at work in thirty minutes. I need to leave the house and kind of yeah. just like robotically knowing like this is what i do but maybe not having like the passion or the purpose behind it and maybe it's a little overwhelming to think about the bigger picture or like take those steps to get to where you're going but like you're still stepping you're just like at a plateau yeah yeah okay that's good that's a better way than how i would put it <laughs> see you're the one with words here you're the one that has a way with words this is why this is kind no. podcast now i'm no. a, I'm a, my computer's about to die anyway so i'm gonna go <laughs> Oh, I'm Bessie. So we kind of just gave you our definitions for what this topic is going to be about. So when you hear us refer to the words existing versus living, you know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, our next kind of question is recognizing how you recognize you're just going through the motions. Because I honestly think sometimes you don't recognize it when it starts. Yeah, it just, true. you don't recognize it till you're at like almost one of the lowest points because then you're like oh crap you're like oh wait this is that sucks. what this is yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah um i thought you were about to say something that's why I no paused. go ahead i was feeling um like... yeah no it's i feel like it's one of those things well and it's also like not extreme one way or the other like there also could be an in-between of living and existing, you know, like agreed. It's not always going to be, you're living your best life and everything's great, but it's not always going to be like the, op just because you're not living the best, your best life doesn't necessarily mean that you're just stuck existing. I feel like yeah, th those are like the two extremes we're kind of talking about, but there's definitely an in-between and there's a gray area for everything. So if you're listening to us talk about this and you're like, wait, I'm not existing, but I'm not living. Like, mm, how do I fit into this? Point. There's a gray area that we're kind of like not really taking into account. Um, but I feel like, like Kenna was saying, when you kind of hit that low, low, or like when you're not excited to leave your house or get up or like the things in your daily life don't excite you, I feel like that's kind of when you know that you're kind of just living or existing and going right. through the motions and not like fully enjoying or being excited about life, which... I feel like a lot of people can relate to. Yeah. Or I think have had periods. Yeah. I think it's beyond normal to be going through the motions. I think it's such a privilege to be living. When I think of living, I think of Kourtney Kardashian, that meme that's like, my vibe right now is just living life. Like, that's oh. what I think. Mm -hmm, because you mm -hmm. have the luxury to acknowledge that you're genuinely like contently in the moment that you're in or like i think when you're going through the motions sometimes you're so stuck you don't know how to get out of it um and so much of it is beyond your means like true true a lot of it's out of your control which yeah to an extent because they're which we'll get i don't want to get too ahead of ourselves because we'll talk about like kind of what what steps you can take right. to start living again and like kind of get out of the rut of just feeling like you're just living going through the motions and existing um 
I guess we can trans transition over to that. What what would be your steps? What what would be your advice for like yeah how to maybe start to get out of that rut? Um, I think a lot of it is mental. I think it's the mindset you have. Um, Mm -hmm. obviously recognizing you are going through the motions and also recognizing that you don't want to just be going through the motions and the anymore is huge. Um, because I know sometimes when I'm really down on myself, I'm like, oh. I'm just going to go through this, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, you can make this better. How can you make this better? Like, what are the things in your control? Also, I think, um, let yourself feel things, obviously, but set kind of like an expiration date. Be like, okay, I'm going to be sad and I'm going to be upset for five minutes and then I'm going to get up and I'm going to work towards my goal. Like, true. set limits so that your mindset can change because if you're in a negative mindset then it's never gonna change my mom ugh, i hate that i'm saying this she's gonna listen <laughs> oh, gosh. but what and it drives me bonkers like nothing upsets me more in this world than when she says this she's like life is 99 percent about how you handle things and oh <laughs> yeah you know when you call your mom for advice and she hits you with that and you're like i get it but you're my mom like let me vent right now yeah but yeah. she's right she's not wrong like it's true it's true and kind of like a version of that like quote if you will say mm-hmm. which i don't know if you've said this or if i've just heard this or or what but a lot of times well pretty much every time and this goes this can go for a lot of things this can go for relationships life work personal stuff whatever is that like you can't control what other people do you can't control the outside Mm -hmm. factors you can't control when you'll get a job when you'll get married when you'll yeah find start your dream business you can't con you and well i guess you could control your business thing but you, you get what i'm saying a lot of times like you can't focus on the things that you can't control and you can only control how you react and what you choose to do with that information. So it's like the cards that you're being dealt right now might be upsetting and not what you want. And it might be a life that you don't want to be living, but are you there in that moment? You can't control those things. So instead try to like, you can, you can control the way that you, handle it i guess and try to change the outcome by doing that 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 was like a jumbled way to say what i meant to say but you you get what i mean yeah no i thought that was good um yeah um i will ask you this do you think you can tell when someone in your life is just going through the motions versus like truly living and do you think going through the motions looks different for different people or like have you ever seen me could you tell that i was going through the motions before i knew i was going through the motions i think for you i could but that's just because i know you better than like i know another random person and i know how you like i know the signs that you show when When i disconnect right 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 um and i think it kind of took me a while to learn that because in the yes. beginning of our friendship if that were to happen i'd be like why is this bitch mad at me like what did i do like what like i was always so afraid that like i did something wrong or i'm like why yeah. like what we used is to wrong? have a lot why of those are... conversations yes because i was like she's not she's not being her normal self like what's going on like i must have done something and i also used to think that like and i don't want to say like if you piss kind of off you piss her off <laughs> but like kind of low-key yeah So I used to think that that, like I was pissing you off and that like, which I'm sure I have pissed you off. I mean, whatever. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I realized over time that like you disconnecting and like those things that I once thought were you being mad at me was just you handling a period of time where you were going through the motions. But I feel like. I can't say that I would be able to recognize it with everybody because I feel like some people are really, really, really good at hiding. Yeah. Hiding like things that are going on. And some people are really good at like putting, putting like a face on, Mm -hmm. especially people who aren't like your best friends. Sure. It can, and you don't talk to every single day. It can be harder to notice if, 
if they're good at hiding it, which some people are. I they agree. don't want you to know. I agree. I, yeah, I'll say to that note, you're 100% right. Sometimes the way I handle things, whether I like what someone said to me or not, it's just disconnecting. It mm-hmm. helps me like preserve my- when I am going through the motions. I don't have as much energy to give other people. So it helps yeah. me preserve like my energy to get through my motions. Mm-hmm. Um, I've also tried to be really, really good specifically with you and just being upfront and saying, Hey, this is going on. This like- is going on. I'm not like, yeah. Even when I got into my accident, I didn't tell anyone about it till like way later in the day when it happened. And even then I said, got an accident. Can't talk. Going back to work. We'll tell you later. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Which I appreciate that more than just silence, which not that you have to explain everything because you don't and it's your life. And when I say you, yes, I mean you. And I also just mean in general people, Yeah. but it's sometimes, especially when you know, like if you know, you have a friend who, I don't know, handles things in a way that might come across as like, uh Oh, is she mad? It's nice to have that, like, just so you know, like, I am going through something and I'm not trying to, like, I, I'll let, I'll, we can talk about it later. Like, I'll let you know, I'll let you in later. But, like, right now I just don't have the the capacity to, right. like, explain, talk, or whatever it might be. Yeah. And I found, for anyone that maybe is wondering how to go through the motions, being honest with people and say that. Um, they really respect and appreciate it and can understand, oh, she can't give me like what our normal friendship looks like, but she'll get back there one day and I'm here while she needs me. Um, yeah. cause I, I have a couple friends that I've started to do that too for them. And they're just, I don't take it person. Like I've learned to not take it personally or when I don't get a response back for a week, I'm like, you know, last time we talked, she said she was really stressed about this. Like, you know. I, I know she's got a lot on her plate. It's not personal. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, like you were saying earlier, when you were talking about the like car accident situation, this has nothing to do with the car accident, but like just in life, <laughs> you don't know what people are going through. Right. So it's easy to assume the worst or to assume like, oh, they're not texting me back because they right. hate me. They don't want to talk to me. Blah, 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 whatever. But sometimes we forget that like other people are also experiencing life and the things they might be experiencing might be bad and you don't know about it because you don't need to know everything. And like that, that could be a factor also. So it's like, I don't know. And plus I feel like as we're getting older, all these things are becoming more like we, you realize more of these things as you get older. And once as like, um, as we're realizing, like when we're maturing and becoming adults and all of this stuff, I feel like that's the, like there's a turning point when you're like, okay, it, just because they're not texting me every day or just because they seem sad or like it doesn't mean right. it doesn't always mean that you did something or that something bad is happening sure. between you guys like it just sometimes life it's, just happens and exactly i have a great mm-hmm. example of this i just sat down with my one of my best friends from college and we haven't talked in a year and like we mm-hmm. in college were in a place where we not only saw each other every day but talked all day every day were the closest thing to a sister like I've ever had in that sense um and even though we didn't talk for a year and things like there was an unspoken like awkwardness breaking that ice and saying like I was going through this she was going through this and just like being open like people are so understanding and willing to hear you where you're at also specifically i think a lot of our peers at this age you're going from kind of a carefree time in your life to a time in your life where there's so much responsibility and change like it really does weigh on you and like you truly do need to preserve all that energy and if disconnecting is your way to do that i for me i think the original question we started with was like does this look different for different people i think that is a theme obviously there's exceptions but i think that's like a telltale sign and then i think i'm decent at picking it out on people just because one thing i've learned about me is i'm very very observant with behaviors Um, i pick up on patterns like i can tell you people's mannerisms and behaviors it's just how i analyze things i'm not analytical with numbers but i'm analytical with feelings and emotions Mm -hmm. and all that stuff Mm -hmm. um but yeah i i could 
pass someone and could tell they're going through something and, and maybe that's just me and maybe i'm yeah guessing got the tingle but i also just assume everyone's mm-hmm. going through something i mean yeah because you well, i don't want to say most people are but like you just don't know you don't know everyone right even if it's as small as they got your order wrong at chipotle that's gonna affect someone's day and that could be mm-hmm. the straw that breaks their back like they really wanted that walk and they didn't it's get true it. it's you true never... and sure there are way bigger things but like more important in this world than the guac but that doesn't mean that could be the last guac. straw that could be the last straw and it just right makes snap yeah right yeah, that that happened to me not with chipotle and guac but like <laughs> there was a day uh that like I, I specifically remember one time it wasn't i don't remember i think it was at like one of my first jobs like a long t- like years years ago like years 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 ago uh when i was like 16 and i remember like obviously when i'm 16 like everything is an inconvenient like i don't know i feel like you just get in your feels right. more easily as a teenager and i was just having the worst day like i woke up on the wrong side of the bed for one which is unfortunate and I hate, like, letting that set the tone for the day, but I just did. And so I was already in a bad mood. And then, like, I got to school and, like, some teacher said some sh- stuff and it was annoying. They trigger you. And I know. And so, like, the whole day was just, like, bad after bad after bad after bad. And then I went to work and I was like, all right, finally, like, I can relax, blah, 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 blah. And somebody, some customer was being so rude. And I was just like, listen, man, you're going to stop. Like, I just, like, snapped on this customer. And they yeah. probably thought that I was, like the rudest freaking disrespectful teenager ever and when in reality i was like in my head and i didn't say this which i probably should have because it might might have made my case look better but in my head i was like dude you don't know that i just had the worst day of my life and you complaining about some right. damn mozzarella sticks is really not what i'm here for right now so was please relax jelly beans? That- yeah <laughs> of course yeah, yeah. i'm just like no and at at that point i didn't even feel bad for yelling at this man because i was like right no I, no you're a 40 year old man in jelly beans and i don't think you have kids so get out of my face but <laughs> like <laughs> i was just not having it and in that moment and even like right now when i'm thinking about it i'm just like dang I, not that that justifies me yelling at a customer but like i don't know you just never that just shows that you just don't know and something as small as somebody getting mad about mozzarella sticks can really could be your breaking point <laughs> exactly exactly so you know all the story be nice to others and have grace because sometimes it's easy to forget that other people you're not the only person who is going through stuff other people are going through just as bad if not worse better whatever so you know that was good that was good thanks my jelly bean story really inspired (laughs) i hope it inspires everybody it inspired me and kind of with that note tying into our next point is really just like we want to normalize going through the motions like it's mm-hmm. physically impossible to be living your best life at all times at all times every day every week every month like going through the motions is normal and it's okay mm-hmm. to maybe not like where you're at but like as long as you're working towards where you want to go i think you're doing the right thing yes um, you should tell them that last bullet point because you came up like when we were talking about this the other day i was like how do you how like what should i do to like change the way i like like why like how do i not be miserable anymore and you were like well i've done this this and this and it's worked and i wrote it on this list but i want you to say because it was your idea yeah um, like you're the one who said it but i thought it was good it comes from kelly but ah she's a queen she knows she she knows everything (laughs) i'm such a wise lady I hope she, she is, feels like she she's is. gassed up in all these because I really be gassing her up. It's um, true. <laughs> I told Hannah when she was trying to make a change and like decide what she wants to do with her life is write a lo- list of things that you like and what you don't like about your life, specifically the things you don't like. And one by one say, okay, I don't like, this is an example. I don't like how I look. How can I change that? And take one step to work towards that goal and that is enough progress for a day mm-hmm. and just slowly work away at that list and it, maybe you start with taking one step towards one goal but then in a week you have the energy and the effort to take two steps towards two goals like it just keeps building and eventually your list will either dwindle down to nothing or you'll create a new list and constantly be working on this evolution of yourself and giving yourself that grace 
it's not going to happen overnight. And honestly, True. there's things to this day that I'm still working on. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think discipline's a big part of it. It definitely um, is because I feel like it's it's easy to, uh, like, I don't know. Sometimes if you're sad or if you're going through something, it's easy to just be like, to for that to become your personality and it yeah. be like, I'm just sad uh, and there's nothing I can do about it. When yes, that is true because I know depression is real and some people yeah. genuinely like go through lows that like you can't just change it and it be whatever. But it's good to take it in small chunks and have some some small thing to work towards, even if it's like, okay, instead of waiting until four o'clock to eat something today, mm-hmm. I'm going to try to eat something at 12 o'clock or exactly. something, you know, something like it can be as small as that. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. Yeah. Any, so I like that for that reason. Cause you can kind of take it in chunks and do how yeah. do it as you, as you please. A bunch of small steps get you to big steps. Also, mm-hmm. I think going off of what Hannah just said, it's really easy to complain and like say there's not a way out of your situation when you're down. Mm-hmm. And again, we've acknowledged there's so many things outside of your control, but focus on what you can control. Mm-hmm. Like, no, you cannot fix every single problem that exists in your life. You can't, again, treat, you can't control how people treat you, what they feel about you, what they think about you. There's so much you can't control. But if you focus on what you can, like the good just gets so much better. And I'll, honestly, a lot of those bad things turn, they turn around. Yeah. And time honestly is pretty much the answer. Like I hate that. It is. I hate that answer. Like, and I hate saying that like time heals because it's so annoying. Cause it's like, well, I don't have time. Like, it's just like, I don't know. It sounds like an easy way out of just like giving advice about something, but it's true. Like nothing, nothing helps more than, than time, whether, and that, that can apply to multiple areas of life. Yeah. The last so. thing I'll kind of say on this topic, and then I feel like I'm good and we can go to the next one, okay. is we have here, how can you or we help our friends going through this when they're just going through the motions? And something that I really think has come back as almost like a good karma thing, which I don't really know if that's real or not, but Hannah mentioned earlier, like give people grace. If you know you're kind of doing okay and you can handle things, voluntarily and openly, like, giving that grace to your friends as well as strangers, like, when you know you can take on more burdens and, like, maybe someone's had a rough day and they're aggressive to you and they don't mean to and not snapping back and saying, hey, I'm not going to be someone that contributes to their day or whatever is making them upset. Or if your friend's gone on a little too long about this, and you're just going to keep listening because you're that great friend. Like, I think that is huge. And like, oftentimes doesn't get acknowledged by a friend. Yeah, and that's, that's something that's good. I think Hannah and I do so well for each other is like half the time when one of us calls, the other doesn't even talk. Cause like whoever's yeah. calling has got stuff to say. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've, that's I know good. I've I didn't done even it. think, oh yeah, we all have, we both have. And we've had our we've had our moments and <laughs> me th- me like flashbacking every moment i've ever had i'm like oh god <laughs> who is she um but uh no that's good and i wouldn't have thought about that because like you said it doesn't get acknowledged a lot but it's true and um is something that like even if even if the person who's going through something doesn't in the moment like actively recognize or acknowledge that like you're doing it it lifts a weight off of them because they, it's something yeah. else that they don't have to deal with it's not like it's there's not another added thing so subconsciously you're lifting a weight off their shoulders and agree even if yeah. they don't know it in the moment they appreciate that yeah you inspired so. me to say that whether you realized it or not because you yeah. listened to me and you were saying that earlier so it's good it's good stuff good stuff okay um Kind of like the second part of this conversation is the social media aspect of it and how that kind of plays into the existing slash living because there's just there's a lot to break down with social media and we could do like five million episodes on different areas of social media and different things about it. But today we're going to kind of 
tie it in hopefully tie it into yeah um the earlier conversation but let's break it down the first thing we have on here is just like it's a highlight reel social media is yeah and i feel like it's really easy for somebody who is going through the motions to open up tiktok open up instagram open up youtube open up whatever and see all these people living these perfect lives oh everybody's so happy she has all these amazing friends he has an amazing girlfriend they have Mm -hmm. an amazing life together like there's nothing wrong with them so what the heck is wrong with me like why can i not have all those things and realistically these like social media is a highlight reel for a reason right nobody's gonna get on there and be like i'm sad my life sucks like right and when people do get on there and say i'm going through it i'm struggling blah 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 a lot of times us as the viewer judges them and i'll say i'm one of them i'm like why are you sharing this keep this to yourself i don't need to know it's exposing yourself it's making you look weak when i feel like that narrative needs to be changed as well as i think we're all a little naive and just believe everything we see oh and for sure yeah like part of the fact that it is a highlight reel is because we all i would say the majority of us take it at face value yeah we see a picture of someone starting a new job and we're like oh she's thriving like right when when that no one knows maybe, like, maybe she is <laughs> yeah i was gonna say maybe she is or maybe her her new job is the only thing that she is happy about in her life like maybe right. everything else is crumbling but you just you don't know it because she posted one thing about got a new job and you think that oh she's killing it everything's amazing what like what could she have to complain about right so, and there's also and- the point of with that note as a viewer as a supporter as a watcher whatever you want to call the act of viewing social media it shouldn't be our job to investigate if it's real or not. Like yeah, yeah. the fact that so much has over time become fabricated, become this show and tell rather than a documentation or a sharing thing. Um, like it, it kind of, I'm torn. I'm, I'm constantly torn by the idea of it, by how much time we spend on it. The fact that so much of our lives and culture is based around these couple apps literally it's kind of like sad like it's i don't know there's so many goods social media but there's also bads and kind of like one thing i thought about a second ago when you were saying that like sometimes people judge people who decide to put their like emotions on social media because they're like keep keep to yourself it's hard like i feel like it's hard to know which extreme to do because if you show everything amazing and everything great it's like okay you're fake and if you show everything sad, it's like okay, Miss Pity Party. Like, what? Like, yeah. why are you? A- why are you asking? Like, you're fishing for people to feel bad for you when it's like, well, why can't we be happy sometimes and mm. show the good parts, and it also be okay to be sad and show the sad parts? But neither means that you're bragging or you're asking for a pity party. Yeah. Wow. That's such a good point. There's I a. Ho- it's about like, it like that. I know it's like what's the in between and how and it's just people and it's just society and that's never going to change like how people judge and think and view other people but it's unfortunate that like well it's designed that way if we want to get technical yeah yeah f the designers not really but oh (laughs) you know like i'll say f the designers on that one like why (laughs) how'd that yeah like our first bullet point here yeah that kind of encompasses all of this is social media hasn't always been that way True. like yeah there hasn't always been these features that calculate percentages of viewership and engagement as well as so much of it is a direct messaging and honestly i don't even think it's direct messaging it's direct feedback you're not having mm-hmm. conversations you're just reacting you're mm-hmm. letting people know that you watch and what you think while you're watching i don't it's think so it's a true. real dialogue it's just the heart eye emojis like you go girl which don't get me wrong please tell me i'm doing great i love it but yeah yeah it's it's funny because when now that you say that i'm like who even asked like nobody asked like i don't know like (laughs) like what is this we just put like people it's a psa to your friends literally literally (laughs) 
Yeah. That's so weird if you think about it. Like I and once we're... like wow, that's so funny. Who created and also, this? Who thought designers? Don't oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, and you're Go also ahead. a lot of people, I don't want to say everyone, a lot of people are campaigning to have randos become their friends, follow them, and get invested in their life. For what? Oh yeah. It's so funny that you say that specifically because at the comedy show, the there was two guys, the opener and the main guy, mm-hmm. but the opener was like older. He was like in his fifties. Um, and he had like a whole bit about social media and he was like, he said, I, he, he was like, I don't understand social media and I, and I'm going to butcher like the joke and the punchline mm-hmm. cause I'm not going to make it as funny as he did. But he said something along the lines of like, why does, why does everybody want random people to follow you and he was like he was like he was like in real life or he he was like 27 followers online is nothing but in real life if you had 27 real people following you like behind you he was like that shit's scary and he was like (laughs) and he he was like imagine he was like imagine the people with a million followers he was like you got a million people crowding behind you on the streets like no thank you and it was just funny because he and he's like his his bit was kind of like i'm old like i don't get social media right and the way he said it was a lot funnier than the way i just described it but he was just kind of like i don't understand why these young kids want random ass people that they don't know like invest in their lives like why should i care about Susie's uh h&m hall i don't even know Susie. you know what i mean like and it's yeah we're like low-key roasting ourselves too because it's like we're out here on tiktok posting stuff yeah who i don't know but you know what it made me think of when you said what? that? What? Okay, so say you have your 27 followers. Uh-huh. Imagine, think about how many people you individually follow. Think after, think about running after <laughs> all <laughs> those people. That many people. Like you're running after a thousand people. Like I, I is... think I follow like 800 people on Instagram. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's hilarious. I don't think I got time crap for that. about 800 people. I can name. I couldn't even name it. I'll give people. you 50. I'll give you 50. Yeah. And that's a stretch. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Well, that's, think, so funny. that's not even the people that you maybe don't follow or keep up with or the pop culture or like your friends that don't have social media or like your fan. I don't know. Like, think of, come on. I bet most of us have 20 people we care about. If that. Yeah. And there's generous. tears to that. There's, there's, there's level to that. Obviously. Obviously. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> like, can you imagine doing like, if you had to run a mile every day just to keep up with them, you wouldn't run. Oh, heck no. Exact, exactly. Nobody what? would do that. It wouldn't even exist. Yeah. And oh, that's that's funny. Yeah. When it started, it was just a fun documentation of like what was happening. I will say likes were kind of always a part of it. So that was always a comparison measure. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. at the same time, if it was just a photo sharing source or a video sharing source what's different between that and your camera roll you had to get the validation that someone saw it yeah that's true and but and part of like the how how social media has changed i always think about and i don't know how i don't know if you were like in this area of mm-hmm. i'll i guess i'll just flat out say it because we're i'm about say to say it, it anyway um like whenever I think about old social media, I think about like OG YouTubers, like, and I don't know how, and what I was going to say is I don't know how long you've been like watching YouTube or like if you even know any of these people who I'm about to say, you might know a couple of them, but like, I think about like Bethany Moda and like, I think, you know, Jenna Marbles and like, so I know original YouTubers, they didn't give a flying crap about what they said on camera. And like, that's I feel like how why social media was so great back then is because they were literally just pulling out a camera to show you anything and everything about their lives. Nothing was right. planned or scripted. It wasn't like, oh, I'm going to like act like this just happened or say this just happened or like post a picture to make it look like this when it's really right like they, they were just unfiltered hello what's up this is me yeah i'm a normal person and that's why i feel like youtube became so huge was because people were just living their normal lives showing yeah. showing things unfiltered and now it's so like particular like everything is so like planned out and 
yeah i don't know i don't want to say calculated because that has a negative it, connotation i mean I like low-key it do be say, calculated sometimes yeah i think that really ties into the whole act of like existing versus living because just like what you were saying most of us and even those og content creators started with genuine intent they weren't doing it for a game they were doing it because they either loved what they were doing or loved like giving people that form of entertainment or whatever they were providing where mm-hmm. now genuinely i would say the majority of social media whether it's sponsored or paid is an ad whether you realize it or not i've said it once and i will say yeah. it again everything is based around this consumerism economy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or consumer-based economy sorry and yeah it's so true if you think about yourself as a billboard or an ad and if everyone's a billboard or an ad like it kind of devalues your personal billboard or ad and Mm -hmm. even when i see my friends i and i as a creative really really appreciate a well put together picture a well photographed shot a well edited video but i i know most people it's not just i'm taking a pic to upload you're gonna get the right lighting you're gonna get the right angle you're gonna get the good poses you're gonna edit it you're gonna photoshop which no shame you do you but it's yeah it's more a piece of art which i respect but the idea of it being a social network i just think that aspect is lost i think it's more of a curation site which obviously if you think about scrolling through instagram as scrolling through a magazine you have your ads you have your Mm -hmm. featured celebrities Mm -hmm. featured articles on whatever topic which is nice because you can curate it these days you don't have to go buy your 17 or cosmopolitan you can just follow kim kardashian and yeah. bella thorne and call it a day or <laughs> you don't thorne. have to go pick yeah. up sports illustrated and uh-huh. you can follow uh-huh. kobe bryant tiger woods whoever you want mm-hmm. um but yeah that's changed and i guess celebrities well, and general changed it yeah i was gonna say because when you said it's like the the process of like professional photo shoot and it being a piece of art i feel like the lines are blurred between like regular people everyday life and the art side of things because it's like i see a photo of Haley bieber like doing like this crazy pose by her pool looking like a tan goddess with like the perfect glow and everything is beautiful and i'm like how come i look I don't look like that when I'm sitting by my pool. Well, that's because you don't have lighting, photographers, professional editors, like at your at your footsteps every day. Yeah. So I think, and I think people forget that like all the stuff you see on celebrities' pages or on ads for Vogue yeah. or whatever, or even influencers' pages, like those people have people hired to make them look that way for in a professional setting yeah like they have a camera that's more expensive than your freaking like than my house <laughs> right well not you know where, like back in the day i think like celebrities were admired and the beauty standards were really based in media like page six of the like socialites and the celebrities in the newspapers as well as those magazines and then if you were really high profile you eventually got to television ads but mm-hmm. now those have all kind of dissolved and don't carry the same weight. And the fact that we sit there, it's like we're reading, we're we're looking at commercials all day. We're working at, like, we're reading a magazine and it's never ending. Like, yeah, yeah. That's where that's I think it really ties into that. It's because you're comparing that sometimes you're just going through the motions because you're seeing these people and you're thinking, why am I not them? Why do they get this? Why do I not? And, and you think you'll never achieve it. Yeah. Like you'll be like, that's never going to be me. So why should I even try? And then you're just like, well, guess my life sucks. Oh, well. Right. Um, when that's not the case. Yeah. And it creates this false reality, which then creates kind of a mental game in your head. Mm-hmm. Um. And there's so many things that we can go into with that, which I don't think we'll go into all of it today. But, like, our next topic is just the fact that, like, how addictive, like, I can't oh, yeah. tell you how many times I check Instagram a day. It's it's funny because, like, we're having this conversation right now. And in my head, I'm like, mm, I'm going to remember these things next time I'm look. But, like, tomorrow I will probably You're, be yep. seeing Hailey Bieber's post and want to hate my life. Like, you know, like, I'm acknowledging, yeah. we're acknowledging and saying all these things. And all of them are true, and I know it's true, but, like, I will still fall into these traps because it's just, like, a mind—like, we, I feel like it's, yeah. like, a brainwash mindset almost. And, 
with it being like so addictive and people not knowing like how how else to go through their day without getting on social media and scrolling when you're bored or scrolling when whatever it's like I, I, there was a point where like <laughs> like a uh i think it was maybe it was during quarantine i don't know but i was like so obsessed with like youtube or my phone or whatever that i like literally would stand outside of the shower like and like not get in the shower because i was like scrolling my phone and i literally couldn't stop and then i'm like <sighs> okay the shower's been on for like 10 minutes i should probably get in there and like put this down <laughs> yeah i will say i think this has to do with other things which is a different topic i cannot fall asleep without listening to a podcast and even if my eyes are closing i will put it on because uh-huh. yeah I, I don't even listen to the podcast but anyway i also will watch youtube in the shower now which is oh which gosh is bestie uh, that's yeah. about that's that's the next step of my shower thing instead of yeah. standing outside i might as well just bring it in with me no i, I don't yeah i, don't I started do to oh gosh she said i can't be with my own thoughts mm, you okay that's a different story <laughs> um i what was i gonna say oh the fact i don't know i lost my train of thought i don't know either but all i know is that be having a phone addiction and a social media addiction is a real thing and i feel like that is only oh, yeah. the, like it's definitely been become a thing in the last i want to say five years maybe even more but like especially now i just feel like everything revolves around it and it's so easy for yeah kids and teenagers and like uh, i you think social media was huge when we were like teenagers think about the teenagers now like yeah these 13 remember- year olds are on tiktok shaking their booty when i was 13 i was who uh, what was i doing i don't even know right what i was gonna say was it's because until exactly to your point we've now gotten to the point where more of our life has been lived with it than without it and mm-hmm. obviously these younger kids are just born into it like true they didn't ask for this <laughs> no it's the standard parents let their kids have it earlier like mm-hmm. it becomes how you're cool it's how you make friends like it's so much more it's never it's not just going to class and saying hi do you want to be friends like no it's about your following your status um and us our formative years were really the time when it was being created so we've watched it evolve we've we've gotten mm-hmm. on board and where it's always been like oh you have to be on top of the next thing and it's almost like if you don't have it you're also missing out it comes with its perks because um, I know Colton deleted his Instagram maybe mm. a year ago at this point. Yeah. And there's so much he doesn't know about, but also there's so many things that he just like. Experiences now really because li- he doesn't have it. Yeah. 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 It's funny because I don't know if we mentioned it. Um. Oh, no. It's on the next point. But it's like yeah. you, you wrote this down that like what would happen if you spent the same amount of time like the amount of time that you that people spend watching other people imagine if you took that time and invested it into living your life yeah. instead of watching other people's like what what would the difference be oh it'd be my crazy God. your life would change and it's something i've tried to get better about um specifically with a lot of my work being computer based and then like watching a show or going on social media that's also on a like a screen base so i've been getting into reading more Mm -hmm. um but yeah like a lot of times to quote unquote decompress when i come home from work or get get home i'll go through social media and it Mm -hmm. hit me the other day it's not decompressing for me to sit here and look at these other people's life if anything it kind of gets me worked up and a lot Mm -hmm. of times it is that genuine happiness to see my friends thriving and happy and like looking all cute and sexy whatever it is they're going for like yeah i do love seeing them and supporting them but again kind of back to our earlier conversation i will sometimes go days i don't think i've gone a full week but without checking social media and honestly sometimes i'll even break it down to going a few hours without checking it or without texting or without snapchatting someone back because Mm -hmm. i recognize i don't have the energy to give this anymore like i yeah I also don't have the energy to look at it and have it affect me positively. I don't want to view it as something, oh my gosh, I have to scroll all the way to the bottom and see everything. Like, nah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm good. So I've started to gravitate towards it less and I have found myself living more and kind of in a counter way, people are more invested in me because when I post, it's gen- it's rare and genuine. It's not 
an overflow of here's this, this, isn't this? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mystery true. and authenticity, I think, really is what attracts like a genuine community rather than followers. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you're right, and yeah. Well, I was gonna say actually, I'm not gonna say that because that's just a repeat of what was said earlier. Um, I guess we can move on to like the last point, which is we've been saying how awful it is <laughs> and like how terrible it can make people feel and all this stuff which is true but there's also good parts about it and it's i feel like finding the balance of like staying connected through it using it for good things while also like living the moment and not letting it consume you i don't want to say how would you balance that because there's not really a right answer but there's definitely there's definitely a balance that needs to be had because yeah like we've been saying this whole time you can it can get to the point of it consuming you and you don't have to go to the extreme of like never going on social media again or deleting yourself off the internet forever because it is a good way to stay connected with friends who are far away or obviously like now people use social media to advocate for like social change and like good things and so it's not all bad but it's just trying to find the balance of like how can i use this for good stay connected with the people i care about but not let it consume Mm -hmm. me and like ruin my day or like how i feel about myself yeah um for me it goes back to doing whatever it is you're doing on there with genuine intentions Mm-hmm. I'll be super honest. Like if I catch myself wanting to post something to get a reaction for someone else, I'll make myself wait a day because I'm like, yeah. no, do not post this right now. You are not doing it for the right reasons. And when it comes back to not be what you want, you're going to disappoint yourself. Um, you're right. I've also That's a good point. Sta- yeah. Kind of on that same note, I've also started. I know it's really easy to start searchy searching and looking at. Mm. so and so and just checking in on those people that maybe don't post as often Mm -hmm. i now only let myself go look if i'm curious for a genuine concern and like friendship for this human not a devious like let me go catch them or let me go see what's the Mm -hmm. new tea or like what Mm -hmm. dirt can i dig up it's like if i want to see maybe where they're at or what they're doing or how i could contact them i'll go look them up or if yeah. I'm like, you know, I haven't seen her since high school. Like, I wonder what she's up to. Oh, she's up to. Yeah. I'll go see if her bio says a location or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's doing it for genuine reasons. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's a good, you know. that's a good point too. Cause I feel like it's, it's easy to like, whether it's an ex boyfriend, ex girlfriend, ex best friend, or somebody who you've just lost contact with, it's easy to be like, oh, let me get the tea. Let me go see what they're up to. Let me let me go sleuth and spy and blah, 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 right. blah. When it's like, that's not going to bring you joy. That's not going to do anything good. Most nine, ten, no. a million times out of ten, you're not going to be satisfied with what you see, your experience, or like oh, anything. Oh, retweet. It's just retweet. facts, okay? Let me just tell anybody out there who's thinking about looking at somebody who you are in contact with anywhere's page you'll not you you will not get what you want from that so just don't it'll <laughs> like, hurt just don't. it'll hurt it will i'll and also mother... say there's this toxic cycle of if you want to find something you will oh yeah and you have to be stronger and mentally say all right if i go look i'm gonna go find something and there's a point where you're like, I'm done. I'm tired of finding things. I know I will. I'm done digging. I don't care. This doesn't serve me anymore. And you That's need true. to be a big enough person to say that. And it's it takes true. time. It does. We all slip up. <laughs> Guilty. Yeah. And especially but... if you're in that mindset of like, oh, I'm mad. I'm going to find something. Like, even if there's not much there, you'll still, you'll, there's still something that you'll see that you'll be able to be upset about. So there's no reason. Yeah. This is so bad, but sometimes when I'm sad, oh, I, I know there are certain pictures that exist out there that make me sad when I see them. Oh, so I'll go look at them. You just go look at them. On, that's like listening to sad music so that you can cry more or whatever. Right. And it's, it's like, it's why unhealthy. do people do this? Why, would, why do we do this? Yeah, it is. It and is, I recognize it because it, it was, um, it hasn't been recently. That was like a more like a very, like when I was younger, I would really right. obsess over things. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. And I. I was like, this is so obsessive. Like, you got to let this shit go. Mm. And mm. when you mm-hmm. did, it, you feel it a lot really, better. You start living. When you let go, you start living. I also will True. say, when 
I've noticed by posting genuinely, not even the most high quality content, but things I like, things that make me happy, I get genuine responses. And that's the best part of it. That's going back to a social network. That's not a magazine. I'm mm, not posting mm-hmm, mm-hmm. whatever. I like this is going to sound, I got the most DMs I've ever gotten yesterday. This morning, I woke up with 10 unread DMs and I was like, wait, from on Instagram? Yes. What'd you post? I, I, I It was know, just my me... business card. Oh. I and was trying to go look at your story, but it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. Which, it was a simple picture, but it was something I was genuinely so happy about. And I, yeah, 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 yeah. I knew in that moment, I'm like, this isn't a flex, this isn't whatever. And I was overwhelmed this morning and I purposely didn't open it until like 6 p.m. today because I was like, I don't, again, I recognize I don't have the energy to give this the time it deserves. Mm-hmm. So they're going to wait. And yeah. they waited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were just as yeah. excited at 6 p.m. as they were at 8 a.m. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's funny. No, that's true. And I don't, I don't, I was about to try to like wrap it up with like an inspirational quote, but I don't, I got nothing. This whole thing was inspirational. It was. I was just trying to come to a conclusion with a concluding thought. But my concluding thought is that life is what you make it. So Preach. let's make it. What's that hand on his hand of song? Life's what, what you make, you make it. it. So let's, so make, let's it. make it. Make it rock. Yeah, it's is rock. it rock or rock? Yeah, okay. I almost said right. I was going to embarrass myself. Let me not. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, well, I mean, thank you guys. I mean, I think that was a good conversation. No, that was a good conversation. We're done. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Send this to a friend because they probably need to hear it. Uh Um, But also tell them to like and subscribe because what you're doing, don't miss out. Also rate us five stars and give us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. That is at HRanzuli on all the things. I'm at Kenicasso on all the things. And Mm -hmm. we'll see you guys in an episode soon. Bye. Bye.